Hello, my name is Patrick, Patrick Bitaturi. I'm here today to talk a little bit about partnerships. This is an area that many people keep asking about and want to know what are the ingredients that make a partnership successful and lasting and why do so many fail, especially in the African society and more so in Uganda. I say so because I've got a business in Kenya and I understand the way things work in Kenya compared to Uganda. Why are they ahead of the curve? In spite of them being so, more, so much more polarized along tribal lines in Kenya, they seem to work together when it comes to business quite effectively. They put aside their differences. And in Uganda, where we don't have all these things, we seem to fall apart. Our partnerships don't seem to hold. Well, first thing about partnerships is get like-minded people into a room and agree on some basic facts. Lay the foundations, the building blocks of the partnership. If you're not like-minded, whoever is not thinking along the same wavelength should excuse himself or should be asked to leave. Don't be too polite to ask that person to leave. Otherwise, you're getting into a problem that will become bigger later because the company has become bigger. Then you're dealing with a bigger problem. So it's useful to see that everybody who joins a partnership brings something, brings some equity, brings value, and that is useful. If somebody is coming in just for the ride, that doesn't really help. You may be magnanimous and very kind and generous and say, okay, we're taking him along for the ride. That is also fine, so long as you understand that. And then don't be too demanding about that person later. When I look at partnerships in Uganda, there are very few successful big businesses that are partnerships. The big businesses that are successful in Uganda are largely family-owned businesses, businesses where the patriarch, the head of the home, largely is the person who delivers. Occasionally, also, it's the matriarch. I know there's the African queen where the, the, the lady seems to be at the helm of the business and kudos to her. We need many more examples, especially of women leading businesses that are successful and causing transformation. But industries like Mukwano, Ruparelia, Karim Hiriji, the people who build these big empires are largely men who run a family business. They have not opened up their equity, they don't want to list, and they don't want partnerships. Because they know what it takes to succeed, they make the decisions and they don't want too much bureaucracy and this consensus building to try and get everybody to agree before they can move forward. They know what is in the best interest of the company and the others have faith in the decision-making person. And that is useful. I have largely grown my business as a family business and rarely do I carry partners. But where I think it is strategic and the, the, we can achieve so much more by being partners rather than doing on our own, then I look for partnership. I look for the experience. My hotels are run by Protea Hotels, by, which is owned by Marriott. They bring a set of skills. They bring a platform that can do the marketing much more than I could do on my own. And that's the only reason why. So they want a fee and I'll share with them. It makes sense. So partnerships are built along those lines. When I see the law, legal firms in Uganda, 10, 15 years ago, there were very few law firms that were really established with partners. It was really a family business. I think a renowned one was the Mogeni family. He's the, the, the main lawyer and his children became lawyers. Then Sebalu and Rule and then Max, a few partnerships started coming. And then the other law firms started realizing these who have formed partnerships, like-minded, with a structure, with ground rules, seem to be doing so much better. They attract the best crop, they pay better, and they all succeed. And so many more legal firms are coming up today. Architecture, not as many. Other professions, engineering, a few here and there, not enough. What about in hardcore business, in fast-moving consumer goods, in Chikubo? No, it's not yet happening. Why? Everybody's limited. Yes, everybody has succeeded. We moved from people having capital of $50,000 to $300,000, now to a million dollars in Chikubo. But none of them has $50 million. None of them can build a big industry. But if they synergize, they could do so much more. The same with the milk industry. If the big farmers could get together and synergize, form partnerships, they could go move ahead. The coffee producers, the tea producers, it can't be everybody for himself all the time. It has its area and you have an, a room for, room for growth quickly, but you reach a certain level where you cannot scale much more on your own and therefore it is useful to build these partnerships. Some of the most successful PE funds or partnerships in the world, uh, uh, like KKK, those have come, people come together, KK were really the first, the brothers, the, the Croc brothers, but then they get other people's money too into the partnership and they share with them and they build these huge funds that invest wisely. They leverage on their experience and the opportunities that they see and they have grown into phenomenal companies. The alternative, of course, is to list, but listing comes with a lot of challenges, especially in our environment. 
where the regulatory challenges are many, compliance, accounting, reporting, um, governance, all these are good things, but they come with a cost, an associated cost. And if there was a big benefit, big pool of money, low cost of capital, capital appreciation, that would work. But sometimes some of these listed companies, especially in our little market, does not work as well. A company's share price gets stuck. The biggest buyer is NSSF. Once they buy, they don't sell, they hold. And they just wait for the dividend. Whether it's very good or low, they hold. So we need a more dynamic environment where if you do well, you are rewarded for doing well. There's capital appreciation. The share price moves up. Several of our banks have done extremely well. Umeme, a company I declare an interest in, has done very well in some areas and the, the, the share price remains flat. In spite of having almost a monopoly in the electricity distribution sector and a reasonable rate of return determined by the contract and signed by the government in the concession. So it, it defeats the logic to see that the company's share price is flat. Is it because people are not financially literate and not seeing the opportunity? Quality chemicals, they did a flotation and the price dropped. What's happening? Can they see that this is an, a strategic industry that should have potential for growth? Anyway, that's detailed discussion for another day. And pardon me, I don't mean to offend any of the companies. I just had to use examples that are applicable to our environment. So, back to partnerships. How do you make partnerships succeed? Get the building blocks right. Lay the rules clear, the fundamentals. Lay them, agree to them, sign into them. And you are committed to those rules. Keep integrity and honesty and transparency top of agenda. What destroys every partnership if somebody starts becoming suspicious of another. If you have a problem, air it out. Clear the air, solve it, and then move on. Learn to say no. Too many people here say yes to something which they know they are not going to deliver, and then cannot deliver, and then they disappoint everybody else. Learn to say no, politely, firmly, and move on. The person will be offended for a few minutes, but thereafter, moves on, and life is good. So, build your partnership slowly build your partnership slowly start integrating with people look for the synergies and with experience you will get better and that's how a country grows we need to build more partnerships whether it is in our family lives in, in our societal lives and as a nation even our nation with other nations we've got to work together harmoniously where we see the bigger picture and the greater good thank you